Hi, I'm Peter Birch, and if you're into knobtail geckos, this is the show for you. Welcome to Criticam. <laughs> One of my favourite geckos that I like to work with are the smooth knobtail geckos, the true smooth knobtail geckos. So we're talking about the Neferis levis levis. For me, they're gorgeous little face, they're big chunky eyes. I mean, how could you not fall in love with these beautiful critters? And the other cool thing too is you can keep them in a rack just like this. That's right, these beautiful racks enable and keep really good temperatures. So at the back of the cage, you've got heat coming up through the heat cord giving them that nice 30 to 32 degrees and they can move towards the front of the cage where they can thermoregulate, control their own body temperature, get down to about 28 degrees. The other cool thing I really like about these geckos is you can keep them not only one per cage but you can keep them with multiples. And I mean what I typically do here is keep them in trios or sometimes even four. So 3.1, three females to one male or even two females to one male. They're a great little lizard, they get on really well and there's no really any aggression amongst them. And for me, the easiest thing is, you know, you give them a nice shallow tray with water. And a lot of people say they don't need water, but I like to give all animals water. So that tray of water is pretty important. You can also give them a bit of a misting to get the lizards to start lapping the moisture off the side of the enclosure inside. One of the other cool things is when you keep them on sand, you can just go through and give it a quick sieve with the sand and remove any of the feces that happens to be in there. So, I mean, every day, the nice easy routine is come in, clean the sand, top up the water, give them a quick little spray and throw them some crickets. And these guys absolutely thrive in these conditions. And I mean, how could you not fall in love with these gorgeous little faces? I mean, as a snake guy, that big head, those big eyes, man, it's absolutely gorgeous. How could you not fall in love with that? As you can see, it doesn't take long at all to make sure we get all that feces out of there and all that unwanted mess. Now, the reason why I like to keep them on sand is very simple. These guys like to dig, and when they do dig, that's where they prefer to lay their eggs, down underneath. They like a really moist area. Now, typically you can, you can sort of build it up in one corner like this. You can spray it down and get it really moist, and they'll actually dig down to the bottom of the tub, deposit their eggs, make like a little egg chamber, and then the females will come backwards. They use their head to nuzzle the sand in and pack it in, giving the babies the perfect opportunity to incubate themselves deep down there. Another little cool thing, these new design, these little terracotta things, basically it's glazed on the bottom, but it's all unsealed. So what you can do with that is you can nuzzle it down into the sand like that. You can get some water. And I mean, this is if you're pretty lazy and you can just top it up with the water. And then what will happen is because it's unsealed terracotta, the moisture will start to seep through that terracotta. And then what it does, it makes the sand underneath the terracotta nice and moist. These little guys will find the hole because there's a hole on one side. They'll dig through there, find that nice, moist little area underneath that's nice and warm. And that's where they will prefer to deposit their eggs. I mean, it's one of the simplest things, but it seems to work very efficiently. Now, that and that alone, I mean, that's so quick and easy to maintain a nice little colony here of, of these beautiful lizards. I mean, here we've got the nice shallow water bowl that I'll stick back in there. I'll try and put it in the middle so they can run around when they're chasing the food. They'll actually run after their food and they'll pounce on top of their food and chop it up. Now, tub systems are the way that I like to do it, but I also like to keep them in enclosures. We'll have a look at that. Here's the other method that I like to keep these beautiful geckos. It's just basically a glass terrarium the reason why it's glass, it's easy to clean. And there again, we've got sand again. We've got a couple of little hidey holes and we've got this nice little basin of water. There again, we've got the little terracotta reservoir that helps to moisten and keep that area nice and moist. So if the animal decides to lay their eggs, they can lay that there or they can lay them here. When these beautiful creatures do decide to lay eggs, they always lay two at a time. Typically, when those hatch their babies, there's a male and a female amongst them. The easiest method I found to incubate gecko eggs was to use the suspended method. Now, typically I use the THG tubs because they're nice, they're small, they're easy, they're compact, and I can put little labels on there and be able to control exactly where these animals are being bred from and what's coming out. And for me, that's pretty important, especially a guy that's right into polygenics or line breeding. You know, you never know what you're going to be able to recreate. Like these beautiful animals here, they recreate themselves, but also nicer individuals. There again, by selectively choosing the best of the best, 
you can manipulate those colours and produce some absolutely outstanding animals. Now, there are a few recessive traits around of these beautiful geckos, such as the patternless and the albinos, but for myself, I'm just working with polygenics, just different colours and patterns, and just playing with those is absolutely fun. Who would think that this female here produced at least 15 clutches, that's right, 15 clutches of eggs. So 15 times 2 is 30 eggs in one year. That's pretty impressive. Now, everything that I've got here, I've actually produced myself from these three founder animals, one male and two females, and I mean, you should see some of the colours. I hope you enjoyed this week's show about knobtail geckos. As a snake guy, you can't help but fall in love with those big, beautiful eyes. They're such a cute, adorable critter. If you're after the racks, check out Snake Racks Australia. Please leave a comment below, hit me up on Facebook and Twitter, and don't forget Instagram. Until next time, thanks for watching Critter Cam.